If you're going to be working on an electrical installation, it's important to know that it's safe to do so. And the way we know this is by following the safe isolation procedure. This video will list the steps that you need to take to guarantee safe isolation and so you can work confidently in the fact that the installation is isolated. And towards the end of the video, I'm going to talk about things like bonded neutrals, which may surprise you. So thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoy the video. Safe isolation procedure. First step is to get permission to work on the installation. This might be a full permit to work, or you might just be instructing people or informing people that you are going to be working and power is going off. It's important that people know that you're going to be working on an installation for their safety and for yours. Then you need to identify the type of supply and system. Is it a three phase? Is it single phase? And what's the earthing? And then you need to actually identify what part of the installation you're going to be isolating in which circuit. The next step is to select an approved voltage indicator. This needs to be a two pole device because to correctly measure voltage, you need to test between two reference points. They would be live and earth, live and neutral, and neutral and earth. The tips should be exposed to a maximum of 4mm, they recommend 2mm, you should have finger barriers, the lead should be strong and robust and it's got to be suitable for the voltage that you're going to be testing. You don't want to be using neon screwdrivers because they're unreliable and potentially dangerous. Multimeters can be set incorrectly and you have to change lead positions so they can be complex to use. And volt pens are unreliable because they only give an indication that voltage may be there. They don't tell you that voltage is not there and to safely isolate you need to know that there's no voltage present. There's good guidance on the H and Health and Safety Executive website. You want to be looking at GS38. That's the guidance for approved voltage indicators. So what you need to do now is actually prove the voltage indicator is working. The first thing you want to do is a visual check. Make sure there's no damage to the unit. Make sure the tips and the probes are fine. The leads are in good condition, not damaged or nicked. The batteries are okay. And then you can use a device called a proving unit. This is a device which simulates 230 volts. It's battery powered. It's quite safe to use. It's portable. You can carry it around with you. And you put your probes into that. And it gives an output of 230 volts DC to which you can test your machine against. Once you become more electrically skilled, you could use the consumer unit. This is with the consumer unit switched off, the main switch is off, but the incoming supply will still be live, and that's a good known source of 230 volts to which you can test your machine against. But obviously, this is mains voltage. Good care is to be taken. Okay, so yes, you need to prove that the indicator actually works against a known source of 230 volts. The next step is to verify that the circuit to be tested is functional. This is useful for a number of reasons. It's good to know that the circuit is functional if you're going to be doing some work on it. If there's a fault on it, it's good to know that before you start. It also helps with an indication that a circuit has been isolated. If you switch something off and that circuit goes off, you know you've got the right circuit. But that is not a means of testing for isolation. This bulb could have failed. You think you might have isolated it, but you might have isolated the wrong circuit. And in the meanwhile, this bulb has failed. So you think you've isolated, but you haven't. So you always still follow the full procedure. You do your voltage checks to make sure that this circuit is isolated. It just gives an indication that you've got the right circuit. It's also useful to know that if something's working when you're doing any work on a circuit because you don't want to introduce a fault. If you don't know this is working, then you do some work and you find it's not working. You're starting to think, is this something I've introduced? Have I introduced a fault? So it's always good to know that the circuit you're going to be working on, if it's working or not. So we've identified which circuit we want to isolate. Now we need to identify the means of isolation. What device are we going to use to switch off the power? That could be a fuse that you pull. It could be an MCB or it could be a double pole switch. 
BS7671 tells us that isolation is a function intended to make dead for reasons of safety all or part of an electrical installation by separating the electrical installation from every source of electrical energy. Now that would suggest that we need to isolate the neutral as well as the line. But 7671 also tells us that we don't have to isolate the neutral should various conditions apply. You can read more about that in BS7671. So we can use a single pole device for isolation, such as a MCB, or a fuse that you pull, or you can use a double pole switch which separates the line and the neutral. It's better to separate the line and the neutral because you then know that you have isolated every source of electrical energy. Neutrals can become live. If you watch my video on shared neutrals, that will give you some information on that. So we need to identify what device are we going to use to isolate the circuit we want to work on. So we've identified the method of isolation. So now it's time to actually operate it. We'll either pull the fuse, we'll operate the single pole switch or the double pole switch or whatever type of isolator we've chosen. And then we need to actually test the circuit to make sure that isolation has been achieved. So you've isolated the circuit and just before you do your testing to see that isolation has been achieved you need to lock that circuit off so it can't be switched back on again and the circuit re-energised. If it's an MCB and a main switch type device there's padlocks you can use to actually lock it off. You'd also display a warning note to say that the circuit's being worked upon. If it's something like a fuse that you've pulled you keep that fuse on your person at all times and you keep the key to the padlock on your person at all time. An isolator has to be capable of being locked off. So devices like a few spur or a light switch, they're not suitable for isolation as they can't be locked off and it's too easy to switch them back on again. So for proper isolation, it needs to be locked off and warning notices displayed. So we've isolated the circuit and we've locked it off and now we need to verify that the circuit is actually isolated, that there's no power. So for a single phase test, you want to test between the line and the neutral, the line and the earth, and the neutral and the earth. And this is where you use your two pole tester, one pole on the neutral here, one on the CPC, test. You do a test between the CPC and the line. And you do a test between the neutral and the line. And you want a reading of no volts on every test. So we've confirmed with our voltage indicator that there's no voltage on any of the conductors between live and earth, live and neutral and neutral and earth. There's no voltage present but we still need to check that our voltage indicator is still functional. So like before we'll test it on a known source such as the main switch or a proving unit to prove that the voltage indicator is still working correctly. So if you're happy and confident that the safe isolation procedure has been carried out correctly, you can carry on with your work. But always proceed with caution. And should you need to leave the job site for any reason, for any short amount of time, re-verify all the steps. Okay, so we've looked at safe isolation and making sure that the installation is at zero volts, zero potential. But what is the voltage when the installation is in general use. Well, Earth, CPC, is referenced to Earth. That should always be at zero volts. The neutral is also a reference to Earth, and that should be at uh, zero volts. And the line conductor um, in this country, in the UK, is referenced at 230 volts. But that's a test between the line conductor and the CPC, or the line conductor and the neutral. Between these points, you would expect to find 230 volts. But that can change because you are checking, you are testing between two reference points, one at 230 and one at zero. So you get a potential difference of 230 volts. Now, if you, ex for example, if you had the permanent live conductor in a lighting circuit and you had the switch live conductor in a lighting circuit, this 
potential difference will vary and you have to be careful. Say this was on a dimmer and you had 230 volts. If the dimmer was turned on fully and this was at 230 volts as well, you get a potential difference of zero volts because there's no variation, there's no difference. They're both at 230 volts, so you get the potential difference of zero volts, and that could register on your multimeter, on your voltage indicator, as zero volts. So you have to be careful. And if you dial that down a little bit, the dimmer down, and that could come down to this reading could be 50 volts, 75 volts, whatever the reading is on the dimmer, whatever how much voltage it's sending through this conductor. So if you're testing at a light, for example, you're testing at the light switch. You might think you've got no voltage, but you have. You just haven't got a potential difference between the two points. So you need to take good care there. So I'd just like to do a little bit more on safe isolation and loads and potential issues. We have an issue here. There's a fault. In the healthy circuit, 230 volts comes in, gets used by the load, and returns back to the neutral at the substation. This blue conductor, it's only a neutral because it's actually connected to neutral at the transformer. If it wasn't connected to neutral, it's just a blue conductor, it could be anything, as we'll see here. So 230 volts comes in, goes through the load and leaves on this blue conductor, which you might presume is a neutral, but it's not. There's a break in the conductor and it's not going back to the neutral at the transformer. So this load is now not working because we haven't got a circuit. And you might think, oh, it's not working, there's no power getting to it. But there is getting power to it, it's just a break in the circuit. And this, what used to be the neutral, is now no longer a neutral. This is just an extension of the 230 volt conductor. There will be a potential on here, which could give you a shock. So you have to be careful there. If something hasn't got power, something's not working, doesn't mean it hasn't got power. It could mean that the circuit is not complete and there could be a dangerous voltage on this broken conductor here. So remember, just because something's blue, it's not a neutral. And a voltage can appear on what you thought was a neutral. And it's only a neutral if it's connected back to the neutral at the transformer. So this video is an add-on to the videos we did on safe isolation in potential problems. This is an issue known as a shared neutron. So the setup is, we have a lighting circuit, we have an upstairs lighting circuit, and a downstairs lighting circuit. They both have their own independent MCB, they're both separate circuits. Somebody decided to add another light, and they've taken the live for this light from the downstairs lighting circuit, and they've taken the neutral for the light from the upstairs lighting circuit. This will all work fine, all the switches will operate, but there's a potential for danger if the neutral here is disconnected. Say you wanted to do some work and you wanted to put a new light up, you've got a new light fitting you want to hang, so you've actually switched off the upstairs lighting circuit and you've tested it, it's dead. It's fine, you think you've got safe isolation. You've tested between the line neutral and earth and you haven't got a voltage. So you, you think it's safe to proceed. But once you disconnect this neutral, this neutral now becomes live. Don't forget you are isolated. The upstairs lighting circuit switched off. But this neutral, what used to be a neutral but it's no longer a neutral, is receiving its power from the downstairs lightning circuit. Let's just follow the flow of power to see what's happening. So we have the live coming in to the downstairs light and going back on the neutral so this light is going to work fine but we, the line is also feeding the middle light so if you follow the flow of power it's going up to the lamp through the filament and what used to be the neutral return is now just an extension of the 230 volt conductor and that voltage will appear on this section of cable here and you could receive a shock from that. Even though this light wasn't working, you've switched it off, 
it's because this neutral is no longer a neutral it has become a live conductor because it's being connected here if you see over here that it it's there's not a shock potential because it returns back to neutral it is a neutral conductor so it's at zero potential but because we've got a break in the neutral here it no longer is a neutral this is just an extension of the line cable and there'll be a mains voltage on there so that's known as a bothered neutral and it can catch you out you think you've tested for dead but disconnecting the neutral from here makes this now at a potential that can give you a shock so you need to take good care um, this is generally in lighting circuits upstairs downstairs lighting circuits you might notice there's more neutral connections than you were expecting so if you are working on lighting circuits sometimes it's good practice just to switch all the lighting circuits off upstairs and downstairs so you want to have a potential for this to check for this to happen for this voltage to appear on what used to be the neutral and if you do disconnect the neutral wire do recheck that there's no voltage on this conductor okay thanks very much